Yeah. We are glad that we are here today for the um, extra training, practical training on how to work on Wikipedia with special um, reference to the African Librarians Week that um, will take place on uh, from 24th May to 30th May. Like we had said earlier before, and even in our posts, what, what AFLIA is interested in is ensuring that the African voice is heard clearly and accurately. That's why we chose uh, that theme, promoting scholars, promoting African scholars to the world so that the articles in Wikipedia can be more accurate, can reflect more of who we are, of what we are, of what we believe in. And um, we are quite grateful that, um, that um, Wikipedia has been quite kind to us, helping us with um, webinars all through. While we are still waiting for Felix, Felix works with Wikimedia Foundation. Wikimedia Foundation is the, is the parent organization of Wikidata, Wikipedia, and um, all other um, organizations under them. Yeah, Stanley, please go on. Okay, okay, so um, just a quick one. Um, so like Dr. Ankem said, this, this is to give us some further training uh, in a practical way so that we'll be able to participate um, in the upcoming event. Back to the mail. In the mail, uh, we said that this part is very important for us. In order to get the best out of this training, you are encouraged to complete these steps before the meeting. And I'm sure uh, as many of us that are here got the chance to at least read. Now, what Felix, our resource person, is going to do is to show us how we'll be able to do some editing on Wikipedia. But these particular three steps are important. You need to go through these three steps before it will benefit you. Other than that, once he's done, you would have to come back and go through these three steps again. Okay, so the first part being signing up to participate. So all the things I put in there are links that opens up to uh, directly to. So sign up, once you click on the sign up, it brings you here. This is a very short form that we have put together for the African Librarians Week. We request your email address and then your name and a username uh, and a few other information. Now, why we collect this? is that during the campaign, we will be tracking contributions that will be coming from everybody that takes part in this particular um, celebration or event, if you like. And in order to be able to track uh, the top 50 contributors and then appropriately motivate them, appropriately award them for the contributions or participations in the campaign, we need to gather this information. And so the first step, which is signing up, is important. You tell us your name, your email address, the username that you're going to use for your Wikipedia account. And here we tell you that if you have not created a Wikipedia account yet, right after you are done with signing up, you have to go back and then create a Wikipedia account, which is a step two. And then at the very bottom, you would also see that, um, we also remind you that the next step after creating a Wikipedia account is logging in on the dashboard. There's a dashboard, we'll go there very soon. And so that is also here. In fact, at the moment, um, so far we have, we have, um, it will load very soon. We have 49 people who have signed on from the beginning or since the last time we had the last webinar. So we've had, we have 49 people who have signed on to participate, which is great news. Uh, I'm going to go back to the next step. All these things I'm talking about are links already sitting in your mail. 
So in case you've not done that, I'm just asking you to go and then check your mail and then you will see the links I'm talking about. The next step is creating a Wikipedia account after signing up. So you just click on the second step and then it will send you to a page on Wikipedia directly where you can create your account. So you have your name or your username. The username is any name you want to be known by. And that's uh, as long as you can remember. So you usually have to take something that is very uh, easy to remember. You wouldn't forget. Uh, even Wikipedia can also help you do that anyway. And then you put in your password, you confirm your password, you add your email address, and then you can come down here and then it says the capture. You have to type in this. Once you are done providing all the information, you type in what you see here. It's a security feature to make sure that you are not a robot, you're a human being creating an account on Wikipedia. Once you fill in all those information, you click on create account. And then when you click on create account, you are going to receive an email from Wikipedia. I've already created an account, so you can see that I'm already logged in here. Once you create the account, you receive an email from Wikipedia asking you to verify the account you just created. And all these are security features to make sure that it's not a spam or it's not just anybody trying to do anything, but I mean, an actual human being trying to create an account. So once you click on the verification link, your account is created. Okay, all right. Now I'm going back to the third step, which is also very important. The third step says, log in to the Aflip the Aflip Week dashboard using the Wikipedia account details that you have created. So here you click on the, the link that sends you to the dashboard. Now this is the dashboard we are talking about. Um, if I am to log out, once you've not created any, uh, sorry, let me just, once you've not created any account yet, when you, when you get to the homepage, it'll ask you two things. So it'll ask you log in with Wikipedia or sign up with Wikipedia. In fact, at this point, you might have already been signed up already. So it's about logging in with Wikipedia because I have my username and then my et cetera, et cetera. And then it will link you up and you will just say allow because Wikipedia already has your details. So once you allow, then it means that you have completed the, the third step. Now, let me just say something here. You realize that in the first step, I told you that we have about 46 people who have signed up, but you would see here that those who have managed to get to the third step successfully are 23. So, so far we have 23 out of the 46 who have signed up in step one, who have logged in at step three. Now, why are we asking that you log in at step three? We want to as much as possible track the things that we'll be doing during the campaign. These are the only way we can track it. The successes, uh, what people are editing, you know, the contributions people are making, in, so that when it gets to the awards, we'll be able to appropriately award the people that are deserving. If you sign up and you don't log into the dashboard, we have lost everything that you might or may do on Wikipedia in terms of contributions or edits. But if you, if you, if you log into the dashboard, which is the step three, everything you will do on Wikipedia is tracked and counted as the contributions that the campaign is giving. And then when it gets to appropriately awarding people, then we can go ahead and award. So I think that um, would be it for the first three steps uh, that we encourage everybody to go through. 
especially now that you are a champion, it's important that we do all these things so that you are able to also teach others who would, you would bring on board. I think Felix is around. I'm, I'm just going to end my screen. And uh, Dr. Kem, you can take over. And uh, Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Stanley. Um, I, I, I thought it would have um, helped them turn their usernames to uh, blue, but I'm, I'm sure that Felix will get to that later. Hello, Felix. Yeah. So, Felix is going to put us through. Um, I, I find it hard to, to introduce Felix because I, I, I bothered him alongside with uh, Ntabi before we got into this. And I felt so sorry for him when I eventually met him. As I see this young man, you say, ah, what does this old woman want with him? So <laughs> Felix, we are happy that you're here. We are happy that you're so committed to um, what Afia is doing with um, Wikimedia Foundation. We are happy that, that you're a part of us. So I think I'll just stop here and you can now take over. Thank you, Felix. All right. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Kem, and I am delighted to be here because I'm, first of all, I'm an African, and it's very important. <coughs> so, um, <clears throat> I, my name is Felix. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I will be specifically taking you through um, one lib um what what you can do to participate in the AFLIA webinars and so um as part of the training today i'm taking you through what i'm calling like a citation master class um i don't have to give you the genesis of this because you've been taking through a lot of um training sessions already but then the whole agenda here is to ensure that africa is adequately represented on the web and represented with the right information because at the moment it feels like our story has been told, but it's, it's been told by other people. And so it doesn't reflect who we are as Africans and it doesn't reflect um, the right story. Um, <clears throat> in the past few weeks, you've been through a series of webinars um, where the focus has um, been on trying to, first of all, um, introduce you to the ecosystem, which we're calling uh, Wikimedia, as well as like what actually it means to be in an open movement and all of that. Um, today's training is no different. It's just going to focus on um, how to use all that background knowledge that you've had to um, lead people within your communities to actually run this Aflia, um, African Librarians Week. So uh, without any much further ado, I just move into the content of my presentation today. I will be, first of all, please let me know if you can see my screen. I, I don't know. I've already shared my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'm going to take you through the content of my presentation. And the, um, the first thing on the bill is what is Wikipedia as opposed to Wikimedia? Why are citations important in Wikipedia? The features of, Wiki, of a Wikipedia article that ensures reliability. Um, features of a Wikipedia article that solicit for reliability improvement. Um, the role of one Lib one ref um, or Af African Librarians Week in citation improvement, and then how to participate in one Lib one ref or African Librarians Week. So, what is Wikipedia versus Wikimedia? Um, I just show you a simple um, presentation um, on my screen right now that shows you what it means um, to be Wikipedia and what it means to be Wikimedia. So, just to demystify almost everything that you may not know, the thoughts that are running through your head. Uh, I just like to say that Wikimedia is the entity that provides support for Wikipedia. And as you can see on my screen, Wikipedia is just one project of the many projects that we have. And so whenever you hear Wikimedia and Wikipedia, do not get confused. Please, it's, it's um, one is the mother institution, which is Wikimedia. Um, the Wikipedia Foundation, and then uh, Wikipedia is just a, pro a project. Now, the project Wikipedia came about, um, I think I'm getting some feedback from someone. Uh, I don't know, but... <clears throat> so the project um, 
um, Wikipedia came about when um, Larry, um, sorry, um, Jimmy Wills and Larry Sanya um, decided to create an encyclopedia that anybody can contribute to in the world. So they developed Wikipedia on top of a platform that already exists called the Wiki. And a Wiki is any platform that allows people to come together on the web to um, contribute to that same thing. So it's like a platform that allows a lot of people to contribute at the same time to the same things all over the world through the web. And Wiki was not developed by Wikimedia Foundation or Wikipedia. It was developed by a man called James Cunningham. And he developed this uh, platform solely for the purpose of um, ensuring collaboration um, on the internet, right? Now, Wikipedia is not the only platform that uses Wiki. There's so many other entities that are using Wiki for so many other things. But then Wikipedia is the most popular one. That's the reason why whenever you hear Wiki, people affiliate or associate that with Wikipedia. Now, the name Wikipedia was coined out of the, the word Wiki, uh, which I already spoke about, and Encyclopedia, so Wikipedia. And that's how it came about. So you see that most of our projects have the Wiki um, prefix before what, what it actually does. And like I did mention, Wikipedia is just a single project of the projects that exist in the array of Wikimedia of the Wikimedia Foundation or the Wikimedia movement. So um, you, as you see on your screen, you see Wikipedia, you see Wikishnery, you see Wikicode. These, as their name goes, um, do the very things that they're talking about. So for example, Wikishnery focuses on um, online free dictionary. So dictionary that anybody can contribute to and use, which is free, right? That's a Wikishnery. Wikicode is, um, a platform that curates quotes of famous people or notable people around the world. Wikibooks is a platform that we use to curate books, right? Books. And then Wikisource is an online library where we somewhat, um, <coughs> we somewhat um, put um, books that are already in the public domain. So uh, there are some books that are rare. There are some books that are, um, you can find in only one library in the world. Uh, but there are no more under copyright. So whenever a copyright expires, we call it public domain, which means that it's open for anyone to use. But we cannot use those books if we don't know they even exist, right? So the essence of Wikistores is to create a library of all those books that are read and nobody can get access to them in a platform that anybody can get access to. So that's the idea of Wikistores. The other aspect of Wikistores is that it's also the future of um, recording countries that have or continents that, that have history that is often written on like rare things like stones, books, or even certain when sheets that um, have not been properly published. We can use Wikisource to put pictures or digitized versions of the original copies, and then we can transcribe them or write them out um, in a much more readable text or usable text, and then it can be used to reference Wikipedia. Wikisource is also a growing platform that can support indigenous communities and underrepresented communities like Africa. Uh, I will not go through all of it, but they are very easy to understand if you go online and read. Wikiversity, as the name goes, it's an online um, university where you can run courses and train people and all sorts of things. So um, these are some of the projects that exist within the Wikimedia movement. Now, why are citations important, right? Citations are important to Wikipedia because it's a fact-based site that relies on um, references to validate its reliability to its billion of its, its billion users. What this means is that without Wikipedia having proper citations and references, you and I would not read from the platform. The risk here is that because a lot of people are reading from the platform and because Wikipedia has adapted this a particular way of sourcing its information and showing its reliability, people tend to believe Wikipedia. And so a lot of people are going to Wikipedia to read now. But then there will be a major defect when sources that are being used to reference, say, African articles are not actually from Africa. And this is the reason why um, it's important for us to meet in gatherings like this to ensure that the people that these things concern are the people that are actually contributed to improve um, content around them. Now, citations increase the credibility of articles that exist on the platform. Uh, features of a Wikipedia article that ensure reliability or that um, um, validates content that exists on Wikipedia. So, if you have read from Wikipedia before, you may have seen <coughs> you may have seen um, 
things like one, two, three, four, as I have used my arrow to indicate, right? These are called line citations or inline citations. And these are um, sources that validate a particular statement in a line, okay? So um, without this, people will not believe what they read on Wikipedia. And this is one of the reasons why we prove that content on Wikipedia is actually um, providing some credibility to readers. If you read on Wikipedia, you may also, also have come across what we call the footer section. The footer section sort of, sort of like links the article to many other variant um, sources that prove what you're reading on the article. And the see also section also provides alternative reading for you to understand the context of what you're reading. So for example, the topic that I was, um, I, I opened that first was human rights. Now the see also section talks about other things related to rights. So you can see animal rights, discrimination, what it means to have freedom, global governance, human responsibilities. These are all things that are linked to the subject and it enriches the reader's perspective whenever they read. Then the notes section or the reference section is, uh, it depends on who's writing it. Some people call it notes, some people call it references. This gathers all the inline citations at the bottom of the page. So that if somebody wants to go beyond the inline citation to verify and to read for themselves, they could actually go there and read. Um, as you may have seen already, um, this uses the um, ALA style of referencing. Um, and um, this is what we adopt on Wikipedia. The good thing here is that you don't have to remember how it is done. There's a software that shows you the process and takes you through the whole thing. Then external link section. Uh, it's important that sometimes when you write things on Wikipedia, you actually reference them with um, things that um, can prove beyond some sources. Sometimes the thing you're writing about has its own website and that can provide an external reading to the person. But then the, the reason we exclude external sources from the main article itself is that we want to say that, hey, the thing you're reading about has its own website or it has other relational websites, right? But we don't believe that these people may necessarily provide uh, the credibility that we need. And so if you want to read for yourself, these are other external sources that you could read. Because of course, if you're writing about me and I have a website about myself. If you use that to reference the article, what you're doing is that you're telling this, my story the way I want it to be told, right? And so normally my website should come in the external um, links section and not necessarily be used to cite the article itself. And that's the reason why we leave space for this to be able to put there. Uh, I'm not saying it's bad to have an external link section. It's actually very important because it provides more input to the reader to be able to read it and judge for, them, for themselves. <clears throat> Now, before I move on to the features of a Wikipedia article that solicit uh, reliability improvement, uh, it is important to also um, put this across to you. Most of times people would say Wikipedia is not credible. I'm pretty sure you've heard that a lot. And you also, um, those of you who came from the last webinar, this question was asked, and I want to reiterate that before I actually move into the other sections. So um, normally what I would say is that um, Wikipedia is actually not a source. Like, Ingrid explained, for those of you who came for the training um, the other time, the webinar the other time, for, for Wikipedia articles, they, the only thing that we use are sources that already exist. Wikipedia itself does not take primary sources. So like you cannot, um, or it doesn't take original research, sorry. You cannot write an original research and come and put it on Wikipedia because Wikipedia is in a publishing house and we will not publish that original work for you. However, we go to sources that have already been created and published because we believe that those have already been verified and put out there. So typically I like to say that Wikipedia is a mirror of the world and not, not necessarily dictating the pace of the world. Now then somebody asks, what is the essence of Wikipedia? Wikipedia is a bridge between those who want to do research um, <clears throat> and those who are looking for like um, certain types of information. Because ordinarily in the absence of Wikipedia, what it will mean is that um, students or um, um, researchers would have to go to the ground, ground zero, to look for these sources. But then we are aggregating this information so that students can actually start their research from Wikipedia. So I normally like to say that Wikipedia is not a place to end the research, but a place to start a research. But um, people do not know this and they actually see Wikipedia as a source. And so when they pick things from Wikipedia, they cite Wikipedia and they go out there and then they're saying, people say it's not credible because actually Wikipedia 
did not write that particular content. Wikipedia is just aggregating that information for you. So if it helps to demystify this particular thing, um, all I, I expect you to take away from this particular um, uh, side of the argument that I'm talking about is that never see Wikipedia as the source for your content. See Wikipedia as a platform that has aggregated that information for your use. And then please read beyond the sources that you see on Wikipedia to be able to verify the information that you need. So what are the kinds of things that you normally see on a Wikipedia article that indicate that um, you can add a reference as a librarian to improve the quality of the article? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is the citation needed tags. So the <clears throat> tags that have been circled in red are uh, actually the citation in the tags and these tags um, help um, the reader or guide the reader to be able to, to, to know that what they're reading actually lacks a citation to prove um, the claim or to prove that fact that is being said, right? Another thing that we, <clears throat> sorry, <coughs> another thing that we normally do on an article is that we also add tags on top and so you can see um, under the Pope John um, senior high school and minor seminary, you would see um, a tag that says that this article has multiple issues. Please help improve it or discuss um, is the issues on the talk page. And some of the multiple issues are the article use you, the article's use of external links may not follow Wikipedia's policies or guidelines. The article may may be in need of reorganization to comply. So these are tags that we put on the article to guide the reader to be able to know that whatever he or, he or she is reading has or lacks these particular things that we are talking about in, in the tag. And then the next tag talks about the section needs um, additional citation for verification. So it's talking about the fact that a particular thing is lacking a citation and needs to be put there. So this particular tag works as the citation needed tag, but just that the citation needed tag puts where the citation, uh, puts the tag where exactly the citation is needed. So whenever you see things like this on Wikipedia, it just, it should just prompt you as a librarian that, oh, you may, you may be able to provide some support to that particular article, especially because you guys are custodians of knowledge. So then the question is, what is the role of the African Librarians Week and what is the role of one Ref Ref in this whole thing? Like I vividly mentioned, um, the one lib one ref was couched because um, of this problem of having things that sometimes lack citations. <clears throat> and then um, the idea was that the better people to actually effect these kinds of changes and to improve the quality of these kinds of articles were librarians, because librarians are actually the ones that sit on a, a wealth of knowledge um, within the um, academia space. Um, or the academic space. Um, now, this campaign has been running for close to four to five years. And um, <clears throat> upon speaking to Afria this year and trying to partner with them to do something in Africa, I think the most important thing that came up was, hey, can we do something for the specificity of Africa? And then when Afria asked this question, what clicked in my mind was that, first of all, there are a few statistics that show that Africa, when it comes to contribution on the platform, is very low. If you look at the world map and the number of contributions that come in, just about a little bit over a thousand are the contributions that come from Africa. Majority of the contributions are coming from Europe and from America, which means that most of the stories that even exist on the platform are not written by Africans. They're actually written by somebody who's not of a color and somebody who's not of a descent. So the person they have written just with sources that they saw online without a proper context. And so they pre present the information the way they think it should be, which normally is inappropriate. That's the first issue. The second issue is that <clears throat> upon the 6 million, a little bit, a little over 6 million articles that exist on the English Wikipedia, just about 2.8% of that content is on Africa. And that is a little bit um, intriguing to me because uh, looking at the number of countries that exist in Africa and looking at the wealth of content that can be produced or the wealth of history that exists around Africa, it's a little bit appalling or sad that Africa is just about 2.8% of 6 million and over, right? And so this is also another issue 
why Aflea worked with Wikimedia to couch this African Librarians Week so that Africans can take charge of their own space to improve, first of all, learn how to improve those articles and then in future, maybe run even campaigns to actually produce content from the continent. The other really shocking thing was that upon all the contents that existed on Wikipedia, it was a little bit surprising that the uninhabited continent of Antarctica is far more covered than all the countries that exist in Africa. And Antarctica is a place that normally nobody lives there. So this was a little bit upsetting. And when we had this, this discussion, this was what pushed our energy towards bringing the African Librarians Week to ensure that Africans or librarians within this space can chant and lead uh, um, this particular agenda to improve content around and about Africa. And so this is the reason why we say with one Lebon Ref, stronger references make a stronger Wikipedia and makes a stronger read for people who are reading about us. Because the impressions are formed right on the internet, not in our homes. People come to visit and then they realize, oh, it's not actually what we read, but then the impressions are formed earlier on when they read on the internet. So it's very important for librarians to actually leave the space. Now, how do you participate in the African Librarians Week or Wally Bonnerf? And please forgive me for having Wally Bonnerf in there. My light has been off all morning, so I never had a chance to even um, improve the slides, especially add the hashtag for African Librarians Week in there. So I'm really sorry about that. Then um, ways to participate in One Lebon Ref. First of all, you can add a citation manually. And I'll show you what I mean by add a citation manually. You can add a citation using the citation hand tool. You can add a citation needed tag, uh, just like I indicated in the, in the um, um, presentation earlier. You can add an external link section and you can add a further reading or see also section. I think I've adequately explained what each of these components mean on a Wikipedia article and how it can improve the quality of the article. Now, steps to participate in One Labour River. I'm going to skip this because Afli has provided you with a platform that has all the instructions on how to participate. Uh, please ignore this one and stick to the Afli one. At this point, I will say, do you have any questions about the presentations that I have done? Because the next phase of the presentation will be um, directly geared towards doing practically these things that I've mentioned, how to add a citation manually, how to add a citation using citation hand tool, how to add a citation needed tag, how to add an external link section, and how to add a federal reading session. Um, thank you very much for the first bit of our presentation. I will um, hand it over to the um, moderator to moderate any questions that um, the audience may have. Thank you, Felix. Thank you for, for this. Now, do we have any questions? I just know that some people say that you were too fast, Felix. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way you talk and, it, and well, if you could slow down a little, you know, okay. um, so that, um, if, um, but let's see if people are asking questions. So that we can um, deal with the questions and, and move on. But the first thing that we had tried to tackle before you came was how to make um, how to make uh, our name turn from red to blue. Uh, yeah. Then okay. somebody had asked if we if we are going to have this um, slide after the presentation. Okay. So I'm going to add that to the things to do um, in the practical session. I think that's all the questions that we saw now. So if you can go on, because we are interested in, in the practical aspect so that we can learn it step by step. So. Okay, so um, please let me take 30 more seconds for any questions, if there are. There are any questions, I'll be very happy to um, do that with you. But if there aren't any questions, then um, I will humbly move on. Um, my apologies for moving very fast. <laughs> I will try and not move too fast in this next um, sec section. Keep going, Felix. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. 
All right. So um, the good thing here is that, first of all, this is also recorded. And so if I was a little bit too fast, um, I humbly ask that when it is shared, you kindly go over again. Um, and then please um, listen again. But if there was something that you really did not get whilst I was presenting, um, please do not hesitate to put the question in the Q&A section. Um, I don't know if there is a Q&A section in this one, but maybe in the chat section and I will do my best to answer the question. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, um, Dr. Nkem's first question was, uh, okay, I'm picking it from uh, like my order of priority right now. And I think the first thing that I want to tackle is, is there a French version of Wikipedia? Yes, there is. So normally if you want to go on Wikipedia, you will type wikipedia.org. I hope you guys can see my screen. Uh, Stanley, can you give me a nod, like if you can see my screen? We can see it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, thank you very much. So, to get on Wikipedia, normally you can type wikipedia.org. Now, when you get to wikipedia.org, you would see um, a few languages on your screen. These are the top I think 10 languages that are currently being read on Wikipedia. This changes, it doesn't get stuck all the time. It changes based on contributions and readership and all of that. Um, for those French speakers, you would see Francais um, right here. And you can click on that um, to go to the French Wikipedia. Now, when you click on that and you get to the French Wikipedia, whatever I'm about to teach you simply applies to your language Wikipedia. It is the same process that you would use to participate on the campaign. But because I don't speak French too perfectly, I would use the English Wikipedia. Um, as you may also notice, I'm going to point something out to you. Oh, sorry. Okay, I cannot zoom this side of it. But if you can see my cursor, you see that the Wikipedia is saying fr.wikipedia.org. Now, a cool thing is if you know the language codes of a particular language, you can actually search Wikipedia with that directly. You don't have to go through the process. So I'm going to go back to the main page. You can also click on this button so you can see this. To choose other languages that exist on Wikipedia. It says, read Wikipedia in your language. And I think at the moment there are over 300 languages um, on Wikipedia, including um, Yoruba, Swahili, um, Osa, I'm trying to speak it very well, Costa, um, 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 I think Zulu, uh, Afrikaans, um, a few other ones, uh, Portuguese, French, and um, there is Chi, there is Akan, there is guys actually being worked on at the moment, there's Elwe, so like there are languages that you can actually um, participate in if you're interested in on Wikipedia. And an example would be if I wanted to participate in say, uh, there's Ahusa as well. If there is, uh, I wanted to participate in let's say Arabic Wikipedia, I could just type ar.wikipedia.org. So once you know the language code, it will take you directly to that Wikipedia article. So French, for example, is fr.wikipedia.org. And then it takes me to French. English is EN. Uh, but if you know you cannot remember all of these things, don't worry. Just go to wikipedia.org and then um, you navigate just like I um, taught you. So you either choose from any of these languages or you can go down here and choose any of the languages that exist. I hope this answered um, that first question. Now the, and I hope I'm not too fast. <laughs> The next thing I'd like to answer from um, Dr. Nkem was, it is actually how to create your user page. So how to turn your user page from red to blue. Now the first rule on Wikipedia is anything that is red means that it does not exist. 
um, blue means that it exists. And so as you can see, all of these things are blue because they exist. Whenever we encounter something red, I will show you and show you why that, that does not exist. Um, so for the purposes of the training, I will be using the English Wikipedia. Um, for the French speakers, um, do not worry too much. Um, if after this you need some help, I can also connect you to French speaking people within the Wikimedia circles to support you. All right. So when you get onto your um, language specific Wikipedia, um, all you have to do is to um, log into your account. So the first question I would normally get is, why is it important to even log in into my account? Uh, it's important because in this community that we have, um, there is a lot of growth and progression based on the work that you do. Um, it's also a meritocratic based um, um, setting or community based um, um, a meritocratic based community. So your merits are what you get benefits from. So aside you participating in the affiliate thing, if those of you who will stick on, it could be something that you could reap certain benefits from. Um, I would like to use Ingrid as an example. So Ingrid was trained um, in South Africa in 2018. Ingrid went on to contribute to the platforms. Ingrid um, since then, I think, has been an ambassador for the African continent when it comes to Wikipedia um, writing contributions. Um, she was also sponsored by her university to go to our biggest conference in Sweden. Um, the next year, the, the, the next biggest conference, I think, is happening in um, the, um, um, Thailand, Bangkok. And that is next year. Uh, we normally give out scholarships for people who are participating. and by having an account your work can be built in there so that people can see the level of work that you're doing so i will advise that you create an account if you don't have one and then follow through to create that growth and succession for you so i will log into my account <clears throat> and please you can also edit wikipedia without an account but like i have explained it doesn't show who you are or the work you're doing okay so i have just logged into my wikipedia account as you may see, there are a few buttons on top. Um, you can see I have a timer um, on top. Um, this is a feature that you can actually activate within your preferences. Um, so don't mind certain things that you see. Some of the things I've added, you can actually do them yourself. So the first thing you would normally see when you log into your account is log out because you're already logged in. You would see contributions. Now contributions is where you can actually track um your current activities so as you can see these are the current activities that i did and the last time i edited was 27th uh, april 2020 that was i think monday and what i did was um uh, what i did was to i think um add um to correct to correct the african librarians um affiliates um name in the list of um, library associations in Africa. And so um, that's what I did recently. And this shows you all the things that you have done um, currently. Now, um, the next thing is what we call the watch list. The watch list is where you put things under your, your scrutiny so that when somebody tries to change something on it, you can see it yesterday I used, I think two days ago I did a training and I was using very funny scenarios to explain this. Uh, because this is a much more large audience, I will not take that risk. <laughs> I would I would just explain what it is. Um, vividly, I think um, the watch list, the best description I can give to it is a place where you can keep things that you you care about so that you can actually track it when people are making changes on it. Um, the reason why it's important is that sometimes people vandalize, vandalize pages and you know wherever they're human beings um, you find people who are always trying to destroy things and so people take pages but if a page is them um, that you care about uh, put it under your watch list you can actually watch it and ensure that whenever somebody's making a change you can actually see or get a notification on what is happening over there now the beta, as you may see on your screen and even on your login screen, is um, the place where you can actually uh, add it, um, like this timer that I added and a few things that you want to do to improve your editing experience. Um, so that is um, 
that is that is it. Preferences is where you change settings about yourself and you try to um, make it much more useful in your opinion. The sandbox is where I'm skipping the page curation because you will not have that. But in the sandbox is where you actually um, play. So it's just like a sandbox for a child. It's a place where you can play, test out yourself, see if you're good enough before you actually go and write content on Wikipedia. And then the talk is where we actually have a conversation. Um, so this is where people will ping you <clears throat> if they want to talk to you and all of that. So um, the talk page is where we actually have a discussion. Then this button is the notices but button. Um, so you send a message to someone, an article that you wrote has been linked to something. Um, this is where you'll be noticed. Then um, notification is where um, somebody tries to talk to you, somebody pings you, somebody sends you a message. This is where you get a notification from. And then as you can see, my name is blue. Um, this is your user page. So when you click on this, it should bring you to your user page. And as you can see, my user page is blue, okay? Now, um, if your name is red, it is not scary. All it means is that you have not activated your user page yet. And to activate it is very simple. Click on your red name, and then you can click on create source, which will be somewhere here, and then write a sentence or two about yourself, just to showcase who you are and to indicate that this is a real person and not a robot. Uh, so you can do that in your own space, and then uh, you can see how useful it is. But then the first rule that I think I have um, mentioned to you guys is that anything that is read on Wikipedia means that it does not exist. So I will give just about seconds for anybody who wants to try it uh, to just make their name blue. And then once you do it, just send a message in the chat saying that I've done it. So at least I know that somebody got it. Um, to do it, I'll repeat the process again. Just click on your name if it's red. And when you click on it, it will open your user page. Now, when it opens your user page, you would see a button that says create source. So you click on the create source and then there'll be an empty space that shows up like a writing pad. Just write a line or two about yourself and then you will see the publish button below and then publish or save um, to um, store or to save what you have written. So 30 seconds up on the clock and then I will get back to that. Elizabeth is through. Okay, great. Yeah, Elizabeth has done it. Okay, so at least the process is very simple to do. Now, the next thing that I would like to take you all through, and please, if you are logged in, kindly follow through with this process. It's very important to do this because if you don't, uh, what will happen is that you'll be given something we call the interface for the old version of Wikipedia. And that will make your life a lot of trouble. <laughs> we want to provide you with something that looks like a Microsoft Word interface or just a simple word formatting interface where you can just write and save. So in order to do that, um, you would first of all, click on the button called preferences. So preferences is on the top section of your page. Um, I think it's the number, number five counting from the um, right to the left uh, on the top once you click that um, please choose the tab that says editing so you see a tab called editing click on that and then when you click on the tab editing you will scroll to the section that says editor or the section called editor and then when you get to the section editor, you will see um, a button that says temporarily disable the visual editor while it's in beta. You have to uncheck or untick this particular button. I will repeat the process again. The first thing to do is to go to the preferences um, tab on top of your screen five buttons counting from the right to the left and then you click on that now when you click on that you will see a, a whole page will be opened and in that page you will see a tab called editing editing is counting from your left to your right number three so you click on editing and then you will scroll to the section called editor in the section editor 
you will find um, a button, a checkbox um, that has the text temporarily disable the visual editor while it's in beta. Now, please ensure that this particular box is unticked or unchecked. Once you are done with that, go to the next button that says editing mode. So unchecked or unticked like that. And then you go to the next item underneath that particular checkbox. It says editing mode. Now you will click on the editing mode and you will choose always give me the visual editor if possible. Always give me the visual editor if possible. So you will click on this and then you will save at the bottom. Now, when you do this, what you have asked the computer to do for your Wikipedia, what you've asked your Wikipedia account to do is to um, always give you that easy way of editing Wikipedia. This is important for all your audience or all your participants within your country. If you take them through this, they would be in a better position to contribute. We don't want to scare people away. We want to make it very conducive enough for them to contribute. So this is a very important step that you need to keep um, notice of. All right. With that being said, please, if you didn't get anything, kindly alert me and then I will go through that. With that being said, we're going to move straight into the tasks that I mentioned for the day. And for the tasks, I mentioned that we are going to learn how to use um, how to add citations, uh, um, citation hand tool. We are going to learn how to add citations manually without the support of the citation hand tool. We are going to learn how to add citation needed tags to articles. And then we are going to learn how to add external links, um, section to an article. And also we are going to learn how to add a further reading section or see also section to a wikipedia article so the first thing to to do is to learn how to add a citation using the citation hand tool so in order to get this i will open a new tab called um, i'll open a new tab and look for um citation hunt wikimedia i will leave the link in fact um Afli already has the link to this, so you can pick up the right link from them. You don't have to worry to go through this process. Uh, but um, in, order, in order to find it, you can just search in Google, Citation Hunt Wikimedia, and then you will find something called Tools Lab. And then when you see it, you just click on that. That is what opens the Citation Hunt tool. Now, this is how the interface of the Citation Hunt tool looks like. And it's fairly easy. As you can read right under the inscription citation hand, it says that the Wikipedia snippet below is not backed by a reliable source. Can you find one? Click I've got this to, Wiki to go to Wikipedia to fix the snippet or next to see another one. Good luck. So all it means is that if you find a text that you think you can get a citation for or citation to um, 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 back it up, all you have to do is to click I have got this and then it will take you directly to the wikipedia article so you can actually make the changes or improve the article in that light if you find um you find one that you think oh this is too hard i cannot do it you just click on next and then it will find you something randomly again but because of the quantum of citation um, contents that need citation on wikipedia it will be very hard if you were just clicking next and randomly just seeing um uh, articles that you had no interest in and so in order to tailor suit um, this particular tool for your interest we have a section called the search for a topic now in the search for a topic section you just have to type hello Felix yes please someone is still battling with preferences please can we give her just 30 seconds to tidy up please okay so whilst yeah. we give her 30 seconds, I'll go back and do the process all over again so that she can listen and also follow up with that. So you, um, you're welcome, please. Um, so the, 
the, the most important thing to learn about preferences is that it's a place where you can find things that need to be changed so that your account can be easily used. Okay, so there are so many other things you can do from here, like Hoover text, but this is not an advanced section. I will not focus on that. Now, the focus here is to get you to introduce your, your audience or even yourself to the visual editor. And the visual editor is the platform that actually makes Wikipedia editing very easy. It does not allow you to write what we call the wiki markup text, which is normally uh, as, uh, as, uh, similar to like HTML. We don't want you to be a developer. We want you to just be a normal person who wants to contribute to Wikipedia. In order for you to be able to do this, you click on the preferences tab at the very top of the page. The preference tab is the number five counting from your right to your left in the top section of the page. Now, when you click on that, there will be a whole new screen that is opened. Uh, you are looking for, you should be looking for the editing tab and the editing tab is the number three counting from your left to your right. So you click on the editing tab at the number three and then you will find the edit editor section. You will look for the editor section. When you look for the editor section, you will see that there is a check box, which is number four on the list, right? Actually, it's the last one in the editor section. You click on that check box. If it is checked already, you make sure that you uncheck it or you untick it. So this is what I mean. If normally when you come, it will be like this. If it's like this, please let me zoom in so you can see this. If you come and it's like this, please do this. Uncheck it or untick it. If you come and it's already unchecked, please leave it. Don't do anything to it. Okay? Now, when you do this, the next thing to be done is that it is the next item on the, that particular bill, which is the editing mode. Kindly click on this button and ensure that you have chosen always give me the visual editor if possible. So you always choose this. And then once you are done, at the bottom of the page, you will see save. Once you click on the save, your preference settings will be saved so that in future, you don't have to encounter the old wiki editing interface. I hope this has helped you to at least um, rectify this issue. Okay, moving on. If you still did not get it, please um, ping me in the chat. Um, I can send you a step-by-step. -step. You can ping me with your email address. I can send you a step-by-step -step visual of how it can be done. Um, <clears throat> or you can watch the video again to get more clarification in this. I think my 30 seconds is up, so I'm going to move on. Um, the thing I was talking about next is how to begin to do the contributions for the African Librarians Week uh, campaign, right? And the first thing that we are learning is how to add a citation using a tool that we call Citation Hunt. So Citation Hunt is a tool that actually hunts articles or um, sentences or phrases or claims on Wikipedia that need a citation, okay? So the Citation Hunt tool to find it is very easy. Um, the Afflia team has the link to this particular tool, but I could also show you, it's very easy to get it. Just go to Google, your Google search bar, and then type Citation Hunt Wikimedia. When you type that, let me take you through the process here. When you type Citation Hunt Wikimedia, you would see something like this. It says tools.wmflabs.org citation hunt. This is the very one you're looking for. So you click on that, and then it will open this fine tool for you to use. Now, when you get into this tool, it's a simple interface. If you want it in French, you can change from English to French, to Spanish, to any other language that you want, you want to. But for the purposes of the training, I am sticking to English. Now, as you can see, there is an inscription just under the citation hunt um, text, which explains what this tool is. And all it is saying is that if you see a particular text in this area, right? that you think you can get a citation for, right? And you can probably cite, you just have to click, I have got this. And once you click, I have got this, it will take you to the respective Wikipedia article where you can actually um, edit that section and improve by adding a citation. Now, if you 
see something that you think, oh, this is too difficult, I cannot do, or this is something that I'm not interested in, don't worry. Just click the next button and it will take you to the next random article to be found so that you can find a text that you can cite, okay? This is the use of the citation hand tool. However, I was trying to explain that it becomes a little bit harder or cumbersome when you click, keep on clicking next and then what you keep on getting is not what you're looking for. It's not a topic related to something that you're interested in. So in order to avoid something like that, you would find this search for a topic bar right underneath the I have got this or the next button. You can type, let's say Zambia as a topic to get all Zambia related content that may be lacking a citation. You can type South Africa to find all things. And I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that it's only castles in South Africa that is lacking citations. I think there is more, it's still loading. loading. Uh, my internet may be slow. Yes, of course, there are more, right? So these are all categories of things that exist on Wikipedia actually lacking citation. For this particular one, for example, Wikipedia for South Africa, it lacks over 1,216 articles, um, citations. Um, for white South African anti-apartheid activists, um, it lacks 17, um, 17 articles lack citation, right? So these are some of the things that you can actually um, use to benefit yourself when you're using the citation hand tool. Now, it is not just about countries. It's about any topic or theme that you're interested in. So let's say Africa. You can type Africa and it can find you issues on Africa that lack citation. You can type library and it can give you content related to library that are lacking citations, right? You can type um, another example. Um, see, um, what's the maybe elections, you will find things around elections that lack citation. So this I think is very useful to helping, your, helping you improve content on um, Wikipedia and to make it easy for you to find something to work on, okay? Now, for the purposes of our training, I'll type something on Africa because we are all from Africa. And then let me see, Africa. So once I click on that, it will load a new content in this area that talks about Africa directly. Yeah, so as you can see, it has reloaded. It says that after the evolution of Homo sapiens, approximately 350,000 and 260,000 years BP, in Africa, the continent was mainly populated by groups of hunter gatherers. This first modern humans left Africa and populated the rest of the globe during the out of Africa to migration dated to approximately 50,000 years BP. E exiting the continent either across Bebo, Mandeb, over the sea, and the strait, the strait of Gibraltar in Morocco, or the Isthmus of Suez in Egypt. Now they are saying that the Strait of Gibraltar in Morocco needs a citation, okay? So if I think I can get a citation for this, all I have to do is to click, I have got this. And then when I click on I have got this, it will take me to the article directly and take me to the particular space that lacks a citation, right? And so all I have to do when I get here is to look for um, the place that has the tag citation needed. And as you can see, um, okay, I missed it, but Joe Carter. Okay, for some reason, I'm not getting it. Let me just see, let me try again, I've got this.
So for some reason, this particular thing that I'm looking for has already been cited, but it's still being read in the tool as needing citations. As you can see, this has already been fixed. I don't know why the tool is still, maybe there's a lag in the tool. So I will look for another article and try to cite. And this is the reason why I was not able to find it because then it's already been cited. So I'll close this and go back. My stop sharing, my screen stop sharing for a minute. Um, I hope it's back now. Okay, there is, so what I have done is, okay, please let me know if you are seeing my screen because my screen went off for a minute before I move on. Yeah, we can see it, don't Yes, we can okay. see. Okay, so, because that one was already fixed, I'm going to look for something else. So in order to look for something else, I click next. And then um, this brought me to, it's brought me to the same article. Okay, well, it's brought me to another article called European Exploration of Africa Began with, um, um, it's a page on Africa and the site that needs a citation says, European Explor Exploration of Africa Began with Asian, Greek and Romans. Um, citation needed, right? So in order to solve this, all I have to click is I've got this. It will take me to the article and then take me to the exact place. So as you can see, it took me to the exact place that actually needs the citation, okay? So all I have to do here is very simple, is to click on edit. And then once I click on edit, I... Um, come back to the place where the citation needed was put. One minute. Okay, so any synchronization, that's what it is. Okay, good. So I'll click on edit. And then once I click on edit, I go back and locate where exactly um, the citation needed um, tag is. Some reason when I click edit, I'm not able to find it. I don't know what's happening, but okay. Let me just oh, okay, I see now. So that's it right here. I don't know why I keep I kept on skipping it, but that's it. So when you click edit, you come to where the citation needed tag is. And then normally, if you can find a citation for this, all you have to do is to put your cursor at the end of the tag and then you backspace to delete it. Okay. Now, when you delete the citation needed tag, you should have already found your source that you wanted to use to back this up. So let's assume. Um, Let's assume this is the source that I'm about to use. Um, okay, let's assume this is this is the source I have found that actually verifies that particular um, article. Okay, 
Now, if this is the source that I want to use to verify that particular article, all I have to do is to um, copy that URL. I'm not saying do this. All I'm saying is that this is the process for you to do um, the citation, except in this case, I'm just using uh, an example. So we are assuming that this is the source that actually verifies that particular claim. Now, all you have to do is to copy the URL of the site that you found the source. And then when you copy the URL of the site, you go, you go back to go back to your Wikipedia article. You would have already edited the citation in the tag. So all you have to do is to click on the site button, which is this button. Yeah, but before you do that, please make sure that your cursor is at the end of the place that you want to actually put the citation. So it should be after the first stop as you can see on my screen right now, okay, here. Then um, you will click on the site button. And then when you click on the site button, you make sure that you have chosen the automatic tab, not the manual, not the reuse, automatic. So that you don't have to worry yourself about generating the right kind of citation. You just have to put in the URL in the automatic section and then click generate. Once you click generate, it will automatically generate the citation to reference that particular claim or that particular fact on the Wikipedia article. Now, all you have to do after this is to click insert and then voila, your article has been properly cited. I'll go through the process again. When you find an article from the citation hunt tool and you want to go ahead and cite, all you have to do is to click, I have got this. Now, when you click, I have got this, it will bring you to the section that actually needs a citation, right? So it brought us here and um, let me just do this. So it brought us here with this particular citation um, needed tag here. All you have to do is to remove the citation needed because you believe that you can find an edit for this, okay? So when you remove the citation needed tag, now you go to the site that you have found that can actually reference that particular thing that you were uh, reading about or that thing that you looked at, okay? And then you just copy the URL. Now, when you copy the URL, come back to the main article, you have to ensure that the cursor is after the full stop, exactly at the place where you want it to be, okay? Then once you put your case up there, you click on site and then it opens up this pop-up menu. In the pop-up menu, please do not click manual or reuse, right? You can strictly go ahead and then paste your URL and then you generate to generate the adequate citation and then you can click insert to add it. Now, somebody may ask me, what if it's a book? If it's a book, don't worry. Click on citation, cite as well. And then you can still use the automatic because your book may have a DOI, it may have an ISBN, it may have any of these codes that you need to put there. Once you put it in, Wikipedia will automatically generate the code for the book and put the book with its adequate citation format right there for you. You don't have to do anything. Unless you are very keen on doing manual things and you want to learn, that is easy. You can still open up the manual um, and then fill in the various steps to be able to add that particular citation. But for the purposes of the African Librarians League, I think we should use easy things that will make our contributions faster. And so this is the way to go with this. I hope this was okay to understand um, because this is one of the fundamental things. Once you understand this, all the other ones become very easy. Okay? So, I'll go over one more time. To add a citation using the citation hunt tool is very easy. You just have to look for the citation hunt tool, which the URL will be readily available to you uh, on the campaign page. Or you can just go to Google and type citation um, hunt Wikimedia, and then it will pop up and then you can click on it and come here. Now, when you get here, like I said, you can either use the random things that exist on your screen by either clicking, I've got this, if you find something that you are interested in and you can 
actually add a citation or next if you don't find what you're looking for, right? And then I also mentioned that there's this bar at the bottom that you can search for things that you're interested in so that those can pop up and then you can actually find an article that you can actually cite and then go ahead and cite. Now, when um, you type, for example, like what I've done, Africa, I found something on Africa that actually needs citation. And so what I quickly did was that because I think I can get a citation for this, all I have to do is to click, I have got this. So I clicked, I have got this and the Wikipedia article opened. Now when it opened, there was a citation leader tag here. I removed the citation leader tag and then looked for the source that I could use to cite this. I clicked on site, made sure automatic was selected and then set my URL generated and then inserted. Okay, now after you've inserted this, the process is not done because if you leave, your work will not be saved. All you have to do next is to go to publish. And then when this bar opens, this section, which is the edit summary section, okay? It is very important. This is where you put in hash Africa Liberians week, Aflib week, and hash one lib one ref. Then you tell us what you did, added a citation, right? And then you go ahead and click publish. Now, the question you may be wondering, like what you may be wondering in your head right now is why do I have to add, add this hashtags? This is because if you don't add these hashtags, the tool, which is the hashtag tool and the dashboard that your um, organization will be using will not be recorded. So in order to be recorded as part of the campaign, and to ensure that your contribution is actually counted, you need to add the hashtags in the edit summary before you save the work. If you don't do that, there will be a lot of trouble. Now, I also heard Stanley mentioning that it's important for you to sign up to the dashboard. This is where it becomes e extremely important because even though we say that people should add the hashtags, some people do forget. But if you have signed up to the dashboard and you even forget to put in the hashtag here, the dashboard will automatically record the references that you added. So it is very, very crucial for all your members or all the people that you're managing or leading to actually add the hashtag one. That is the most important thing, the first thing. If they forget for some reason, because they are signed up onto the dashboard, it will save them. The edit will still be recorded, okay? So um, I think these are the very important components of how to contribute on the platform. And hopefully um, you can teach your people the importance of this hashtag as well as signing up to the dashboard. Before I move on, I'd like to take questions because this particular thing is the fundamental for all the other things that I'm teaching. And I think I have just about 10 to 15 minutes to wrap up with all, of, all the other things, which is very easy to do. So please let me know if you understood this properly or you did it. Hello, Felix. Yeah. We have questions here. Okay. The okay. first one is that what shows that the content that, that there is is authentic if it doesn't have a source? What if it's not correct and does not necessarily need citation, rather correction? How does one work it out? That's number one. The second one is supposing the citation is not online. When is a hard copy of material to be cited? How do we get around it? Okay. Number three. Uh, please let me answer this too. All right. Before okay. I forget. Okay. Uh, okay. So the first thing here is that um, I think the first question was about. Um, if the citation, if the thing does not need a citation and rather needs a correction. So one of the underlying principles of Wikimedia is the bold. This is the mantra that we carry along with us within the Wikimedia circles. All we are saying here is that if you find something that you think is fundamentally wrong, do not just add a citation because you think uh, we're adding a citation to the campaign to make a campaign or something. Go ahead and make that change and then properly cite that particular change that you made so that um, whatever you put there leaves 
a high credibility as opposed to what was there before. If it is something that is um, <clears throat> arguable, I, I'm sorry, ar arguable, all you have to do is to um, create a section and say maybe um, other thoughts about the subject, and then you can put your thoughts there as well, and then um, add a citation. So all we are saying here is that if you find something that is fundamentally wrong, please edit it. Don't be afraid to edit it. Edit it and then add the um, adequate citation to prove that thing. Now, the second question mentioned that what if we have um, things to cite that are not in books? If you have things to cite that are not in books, hey, that are not online, um, it's very easy, like I was mentioning. So let's assume... Um, Let's assume we want to cite this particular thing again. Let me zoom in so you can see this. You remove the citation needed tag like I taught you earlier. You click on the cite button. And then let's assume what you are citing is not on the web, but it's a book. If it's a book, every well-published book has an ISBN number or a DOI or some, some reference of a sort, right? These references, when you paste them here directly, can be generated automatically for you, right? This is the reason why I insist that we should use the automatic side and not the manual, because I don't want to confuse people at this point. I just want to make life very easy for anybody who wants to participate. So whether be it a book, a journal, or whatever it is that is in hard format, they have reference codes that can be put here. And those refer reference codes is what we're actually asking for you to put here. And then when you put it there, you can generate, and then that's it. We even allow you to put in a title, just a title of a book, if you don't, for some reason, do not find the uh, ISBN or something. Maybe that, that last page was torn or something. You cannot find the ISBN code. You can just put in the title. If it's in um, one of the databases that we use, it will automatically put in the adequate citation for you. Okay? So be it hard, soft, or whatever it is, it's easily referenceable or citable only if it has a reference code, right? Which is most of the times the case for most of the non-online published books, uh, published resources. I hope I answered the question with that. Okay, still, okay. Um, we still have around three more questions. Okay. Um, somebody says, if editing using a book and the information does not pop up using the automatic help saying using say using the ISBN can you still go ahead and edit manually I think you have answered that one now yes you can um, I can also show you that I, I just don't want to confuse people but if, if there is interest I will do it so let me just show you that as well so if for some reason um, you used the generate button so my my battery is almost out my light is still not on I don't know what is happening today but I'm just hoping we can get this thing done. So if for some reason, um, uh, let me quickly show you this. If for some reason you do not, you are not able to generate using um, the auto generate thing that we're talking about, you could also use the manual. Now in the manual, we ask you, what are you actually citing? Are you citing a website? Are you citing a newspaper? Are you citing a book? Are you citing a journal? So in your question, it was a book. So let's go to book. When you click on the book, oh no, okay, good. When you click on the book, it has like an, a form wizard that is going to ask you questions, right? So what is the last name and first name of the author of the book? What is the title of the book? What is the publisher of the book? Which year of publication was, like which year was the book published? Who, what is the ISBN number of the book? The location of, of publication and then the page that you are citing, right? Once you put it in, you put in this, you can just go to insert and automatically it will also add that for you. So whether you choose to do the automatic or not, there's still a way to go around it if you are trying to generate automatically. I hope this has answered your question. Please, if I didn't answer your question, let me know.
I cannot hear you if you're talking, Dr. Duncan. Yeah, um, I think that uh, that is okay. Uh, I'm just stepping in for Dr. Duncan. Uh, two more questions maybe we'll quickly ask and then you can continue. Hopefully the lights will be back. Um, another one wants to find out. Um, so assuming there's an article that I cite, okay, or I make an edit to that article um, in Wiki, can that same article be edited or that same citation, can you have another person also do uh, additional edits to that article or citation at a later time once I have done that? Yes, this is a very uh, good that's question. That's what someone wants to know. This is a very good question. Because of my life situation, I'll try and answer the questions one at a time so I don't clamp it up and miss everything. So. Um, this is a very good question, and this is also one of the power of Wikipedia. Because Wikipedia is a, wiki, is, is a wiki, people can actually improve whatever you put out there. And this will give you an opportunity to show you a very good example, right? So I'm giving you an example of something that I did myself. It's called the 37 Military Hospital. The 37 Military Hospital is um, one of the second largest hospital in Ghana. Okay, and you see this, the way this article is looking now with at least 10 citations and content and photos, I'll show you what happened. When I started this article, so where I just went is called the view history. View history is like a time machine. You can go way back in time to see how an article looked like at a particular time. When I started this article, the very first day I started this article, this is how it looked like. I didn't even add a citation then. I just wrote, the Test of Military Hospital is the second largest hospital in Ghana. It's located in Accra, near the Nima area. And I wrote this stuff, right? See what happened after that. I'll keep on showing you. Then you can see. So after that, somebody came and added, I think it was me. No, that was Enoch came to add, so um, how am I seeing this? You can see my name, Flix, there. You can see Enoch. He was the next person that improved it. He added category hospitals in Ghana. And then I'm going to move on again. Then somebody added a Ghana Geo stab. So this article is a Ghana geographical related um, stab. And then let's see what happened again. And this was added by me, okay? This was added by me. I came back to edit my own article. Then somebody came and edited my text to make it much more simplified and to carry the right message, right? So the person wrote this and added a reference. So the person was the first person to add a reference actually to my article. So all I'm trying to get to you, I can do this on and on and I'll show you each step of the way how the article improved. The question you asked is a very good one because often people think when they do something on Wikipedia, nobody can edit it. Because it's a wiki, anybody can contribute to it. The only thing is that you have to watch pages that you are interested in so that when people are trying to vandalize that page, you can easily see it, okay? However, most of the times, people are not vandalizing the pages. They're actually working to improve the content that you've already added. Now, this leads me to another question that I was asked a couple of days ago when I did the training. Now, the question was that, can somebody add another citation to an article that already has citation? Yes, because I, I, I use this example to them in my um, country, there's a proverb that goes like, a lot of meat does not spoil the soup. It only makes it better, okay? So it's the same thing. Adding multiple references to a particular phrase or claim or content only makes the content much more credible because then there are more sources for the reader to be able to refer to. So if you add a source to an article and you still find another source, please go back and add it. It only makes it better. Now, the other question that I was asked again was, so if I find 10 sources and I add it to the article once and I save it, what happens? Each time you click the publish button, that is when an, a, a contribution is recorded for you. So if you find 15 different sources, don't do all at the same time. Do the first one and publish it. Do the second one so they can get 15 different um, edits done in that publication. Now, other than that, you would have done 15, but all will go as one. This is something that I need to reiterate to you, okay? So I'll repeat again. Having multiple citations is not a problem. It is rather good for us because the more citations means that the more we can show proof of the claim that we are making on that particular content. 
Okay, so if you find a source and you add it to a particular thing that needed a source or that already had a source and you still find more, please go there and add it. Don't shy away from it. Just go back and add it, okay, to increase the quality of that particular thing. However, though, you cannot have like 20 citations on one article. Of course, there may be one particular phrase that has like 20 or one particular line that has like 20 things that can cite it. Most often than not, that will become too cumbersome. Right, and it will even destroy the, the, the smoothness of the reading. So normally what I do is that I limit myself to at least four. So if I go to an article that I think I have a source, but has more than four, I will not do that. Normally I will not add on to that because I think unless the sources there are not strong enough and I think I have a much more stronger source, then I can remove one of those sources and put my stronger source there, right? But if all of them are strong enough and it's the same thing that you're citing, I think Maximum five is okay. More than that, it becomes too cumbersome. Okay. And then about the fact that something that you have written can be edited, of course, because it's a wiki, anybody can edit what you've written. I hope I answered your question very well. Thank you, Felix. We got that. Yeah. There's another question here. I think it's the last one now. Okay. When you fix the in text citation, yeah. does it automatically get fixed in the reference section? Yes. You get that. So, yes, I got it. So, as soon as you fix, then you see, let me just hint you because you guys are ambassadors. We are not teaching you the whole of Wikipedia. There are so many things that you will not know in this new phase. We are only helping you so that you can articulate what needs to be done to be able to, for, some, for somebody to be able to enter the campaign. Okay? And that's why we're focusing on just the citations. Normally, creating a whole Wikipedia article will teach you how to add the reference section and how to add things that actually hold all references in the article to the reference section. So the simple and short of it is that when a reference section is created, there's a template that is put in that reference section that pulls automatically all inline references or in-text references that are being added to the article. Because you will be editing mostly articles that already exist, you don't have to worry about that. Once you put in your references, automatically to be organized at the bottom. Right. But there's a process to get it done, which I will not talk about today because we're just focusing on how to add citations for now uh, for the purposes of the one of one of company and the African Librarians Week. I hope I made sense on that. Felix, someone else said, so that means that before we, um, we, we, work on any citation we must have gotten some reference some some sources before working on those um, citation needed um yes so normally the way the order for you to do this is to go on citation hunt find something that you think you can get a citation for if you can't like i said skip until you find something that you can and then when you get that thing that you think you can click, I've got this, go to the page, find where the citation needed tag is, then quickly go and do your search. Once you find your source, come back to the article, click edit, remove the citation needed tag, and then follow the process to cite with your source that you've gotten. You cannot say you're editing a Wikipedia article when you don't have the source. So normally that's the process that you go through to cite a Wikipedia article. This is not the only way to participate in the campaign. The citation, need, need, um, the citation hunt tool is just one way. There are two other ways that I'll show you. And then the, um, the two other ways will also provide more avenues for you to get content to be able to edit during the campaign period. I hope I answered that question too. Yes, you did, Felix. But, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, whether we should tell everyone now that when we get the articles for them to edit or they get the articles to edit you yeah. know as a group as a country they should do their research first and get some citations ready why i'm talking this way is that when we stumbled upon um, our eds um that's our executive director's article that's the article about her what we did was to check these things that we want to add about her where can we find them so that when we are ready to work on them we just leave them and put i don't know if i made sense yes you're making sense but you see this particular approach works for 
situations where you already know what you're going to touch on. So for example, um, librarians in South Africa decided that they will only edit, um, the theme is um, promoting African scholars. So they decided that they will only edit um, sci um, scientists from South Africa, right? So then they found specific people that they were interested in, like maybe, um, let's assume Nelson Mandela was a scientist. So they found Nelson Mandela and maybe a few other people. They did the research on all those people and had their sources ready. So going into the uh, campaign or editing or whatever, they are already targeting certain particular articles. That is when you would find the sources in, in weight of finding those articles and putting them there. Okay, so I think um, let's see if we can, I have a few things to rehash, uh, to fill in and then see if um, he'll be able to join us, hopefully. Uh, there are three things that I just want to rehash. Um, he's exposed us to uh, virtually a lot of things, but let's remember, you know, like I think he mentioned today and then some previous engagements, once you're exposed to some of these things, the tendency for you to know more and to do more is there, it's natural. And uh, it comes with research skills. But let's understand that the focus of this week, this campaign, is to add citations, improve the articles on Wikipedia about Africa by adding citations and references. And that's the focus. Of course, you can go ahead and make, create new articles or even add a few other things to existing articles and all that. But let's understand that it's about taking the step one and then gradually in the course of our engagements with Wikipedia, uh, sorry, Wikimedia, there are many other things in store that would naturally graduate all our participants, build their skills to now do deeper things in Wikipedia. But um, the focus for us to, for us now is to remember that we're looking for um, articles on Wikipedia that need citation, that need attention, that needs to be improved by adding citations and improving the content by including references, etc. The, the second thing I would want to rehash has to do with the, the hashtags. Um, like he mentioned, at the end of every editing, there is an edit summary. That's where you would indicate what you just did. And we are saying that always remember that before you say what you just did to a particular article, you would please add the hashtag, the AFLibWeek hashtag, and then the one lib one ref hashtag. Now, why we are doing this is for the purposes of evaluation. This is a campaign that we need to assess the success of the campaign. And so these are some of the things that will help us to properly assess the success of the campaign once it rolls out. I would also remind us that all these skills that we are imparting is for us to get ourselves involved in from the 24th to the 30th. So that is when the campaign begins. But it is only good that we show and then train all the people, give them the skills. Between now and that time, they can, you know, revise and retry and get their hands, hand, you know, try their hands on what they have been taught. And by the time the campaign begins, they are really, sorry, they are ready to, you know, you are ready to run with everything. So the space between now and the 24th to 30th is to help all of us prepare ourselves adequately, try our hands on what we have learned, uh, put it into practice. You know, where you have problems, the AFLIA team is always available. Uh, you send us a mail, we we'll see how we can support you, see how we can remind you or help you out. And then the last thing has to do with the steps um, quickly. I think um, English, Ingozi and a few others are indicating confusion. Now, the reason why we are saying that the steps, maybe I can quickly share my screen and then try to explain the steps. Um, So for now, because we have not yet started the, the campaign itself, uh, there are three steps, like I put in the middle, that is very important for us. There is a sign up, then there is a user account creation, 
and then there is a login in to the dashboard. And I'm going to explain why these steps are important and how different they are. Signing up is the first step. Now, when you do that, what you are doing is you are helping player record how many people are getting on board with this particular campaign. We want to have an idea how many people are really getting involved through Aflia. Okay, and that's why the first step is important. So over there, we ask you some questions about, um, do you have any experience with editing Wikipedia before? Uh, do you, um, um, where you are coming from, the country and all that. So these are things that gives us a fair idea of number one, how the participation is going, and number two, the spread of participation, okay, when it comes to the African continent. So this is the first step and it's important. Signing up does not mean that you, you can automatically edit an account, or sorry, an article on Wikipedia. It's just the first step that gives us, as Aflia, a feel of how the participation is going and it helps in evaluation as well. Now, the second step is what you need to do before you can even think of adding citations or making any edit on Wikipedia. Okay, so without creating an account on Wikipedia, you cannot be given access to make an edit or add a citation or whatsoever. Okay, so that is a different step from the signing up to participate. So they are exclusive of each other. Now the third step, which is logging in to the dashboard, is a follow-up from the second step. Once you create your Wikipedia account, you have your username and your password. All we would say is now log in to this dashboard that we have. Now why are we saying log in to this dashboard? Um, um, Felix was mentioning the hashtags and all that. You see, this is what would help us do the evaluation. So you can go ahead and create a Wikipedia account and then do your editing and everything. But we would not be able to track the progress or your contributions as part of the Aflip Week campaign unless you, are, you log into this dashboard. And so once you log into this dashboard, it captures you as an editor. Anything you do on Wikipedia is counted as part of the campaign. And that is a good measure of the, if, um, a good measure for the evaluation of the, the program's success. That's number one. Number two, remember that as part of the benefits, if you go to the, the Afli Week site, the, there is a mention of awarding contributors okay this is the only way we'll be able to track the people who are contributing and so be able to award them according to merit okay so we say under uh, under uh, some of the frequently asked questions we we try to explain and we say top 50 participating librarians will be recognized and awarded if you are not logged on to the dashboard we will not be able to capture your contributions and then rank the contributions properly. And so you'll be missed out on that, okay? So these are some of the reasons why we are saying the first three steps are important. They are different on their own, but each of them contributes to evaluating the success of the, the campaign. Um, I don't know if uh, Felix has managed to return. But uh, Dr. Ankam, that's just what I wanted to. Yeah, Felix, I think Felix is. I'm Felix seeing is Felix. So he can take some more questions and maybe just go through what he did before. Then um, someone has asked if the champions are going to be awarded. It's, it's like a volunteer thing. You know, you are going to help lead your country with others to ensure that this thing works out in your own country. If the champion um, is, the, is, the, is the highest contributor, you know, or um, eligible to win a prize because of um, 
um, what he or she considered. Then you win the prize, you know, but there's nothing marked out specifically for champions. Do we understand that? Felix, please, you may continue. Somebody was asking how they are going to know if they've logged on to the dashboard. So I don't know if we can. Or maybe let's, let's let Felix finish up and then uh, I'll attend to that. But uh, yeah. And please, while we are waiting for Felix, we are quite pleased, you know, quite excited that um, our executive director is here with us. Good afternoon, Ma. Please, before we end the day, we hope you can say a few words to us. Thank you, Ma. Okay, so I, all along I was talking, but I was muted. I don't know why, but please let me know if you can see my screen. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Okay, great. So um, I found a solution to this, but um, I was answering a, set, a particular question when I went up. I don't remember the question anymore, but um, if I did not answer it right, please, or if you wanted more clarification, please put it in the chat again and let it be read to me again. Um, I heard about the, how do you know if you're signed up onto the dashboard. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so if you're signed up to the dashboard, normally when you get into the dashboard and you're not signed in, you can see from your screen. As you, as you can see right here, um, there is a button on the top right that says W login, which means you're not logged in. The moment where you click on this, it says that login with Wikipedia. And then if I happen to successfully log in, you would see that it takes me through the process where I allow automatic authorization. And then the interface will change. It would begin to have logout and then your name. This is how you see you're logged in, right? And then if you log in, you will see all the programs that you have signed up to appear under my dashboard. So if you are not signed up to any program, it will not show, right? And so if you have not signed up to the affiliate thing yet, when you log in, you will not see it. But then if you sign up, when you log in, you will see it there. So to be able to see that you have logged into your account, all you have to look for, out for is your name at the top and then the logout button. Once you see your name and logout, which means you are logged in. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I think, I think you can continue. Okay. So once again, I want to apologize for the person whose question I was answering before I went off, but, um, and I, I don't seem to remember the question too. So if, if you can ask it again, or if I didn't answer it very right for you, please do feel free to ask that question again. And I will be, hum, 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 I will humbly respond to that. Um, <clears throat> now you have already learned how to use the citation hunt to add a citation. The next thing that I'll teach you is how to add a citation, which of course, as I kept on reiterating, that once you know how to use the citation hand tool to add a citation, it's like saying, don't use the citation hand tool anymore, but add a citation, which of course you already know now. So let's go back to um, an article. Um, can you give me the name of the um, executive that did not have a citation in the article? Could you please help me with that so I could just... Hello, Felix. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, our, it's the executive director of Aflia, Helena Asamoah Hassan. Why I, I chose the article is that because it's, it's somebody we know, you know, I, I went through the article yesterday night and I saw that, oh, there are so many gaps, you know, yeah. the, about her being board chairman, about her being executive director, Aflia is not there and it's not okay. the, 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 the real picture. So we want to put it there. Okay. So I will use this example to show you a real-time solution, like a real-time editing of um, an article like um, Dr. Helena Samoa. And um, first of all, when I get to this article, I am sad. I am sad because there's no picture of her. And this is the kind of problem that we face with, even though there are, like we face with Wikipedia when it comes to Africa, even though there are some content, the content are lacking photos. Right, Dr. Elena is somebody that we all know within Aflia. It should not be so difficult for somebody to get a picture and put it out there. 
right? So I know Dr. Elena is Ghanaian and she lives in Kumasi. One of these days when I pass by Kumasi, I'll have to take a photo of her and then update this particular article. But in the meantime, we're going to add a few sections and um, a few things that she's done so that we can um, actually improve this article very, 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 very well. Okay, so um, I will not do something heavy on this article. I will still leave it to majority of you, but then I'll just do a single edit or two, just so you can see what we're talking about. Now, if I look at this article, and every article has three components, right? The components are the lead section, what normally in a book you will call a blurb, right? Or the lead up section, which is the first thing you're seeing in Dr. Um, Helena R. Asamwe's um, article. And then the problem here is that they have clouded the intro section with too much information with too much information. I'll show you another example. <clears throat> Pardon me if I'm using my personal article, but I'm using my personal article because uh, that's one, one that I can easily remember. Now, if you look at this article, it clearly states who I am, why I'm married to be on Wikipedia, and then that's it. It doesn't say anything again. So it says, I'm a social entrepreneur, an open advocate, who was named the Wikimedia of the Year in 2007 by the co-founder Jim Wills, and I'm the chapter lead and co-founder of Crypto Commons and also um, Open Foundation West Africa in Ghana. Finished, right? So with that said, this article, if you guys decide to work on this, should be broken down into multiple aspects. I can see that her education has been said in the intro section, it's wrong. There must be a section called education. There must be a section called career. And then all of those things should be broken down easily. Now, when you do, don't do that, what happens is that a lot of people will find it very difficult to assimilate the information that is on the side. So how this article is looking now is not the best. And I expect that at the end of this campaign, these are the things, things that concern Africans and concern African Liberian network should be improved drastically. Right. So this is a perfect example to use. And I really thank you so much for bringing this across to me because I didn't even know, right? So to properly make sure that this information is organized in a way that makes sense, I will click my edit button as usual. Okay, this is a problem editing with your phone. Um, actually a tablet, this, this is what happens. <laughs> it's not even opening. Okay, great. Ah, it's giving me the old editor. I really want a visual editor. Because I cannot show you with this. Okay. So this is the challenges on my face with this particular one okay okay then stanley let's do something we have to improvise can you log into your account and share your screen instead and then i will show you what to do and then you do them from your end Yeah, so um Felix? Yes. So please go to Hel um Helena Asamoa Hazan article. Yeah, um I'm there. Okay. Now um can you kindly create a section called uh, um and create a section called um what's the name? Education. Um So you have to choose the editing tab. Yeah. No, it's at the top. The editing oh, mode, you should change that. You change that to always give me. If you choose, remember my last editor, it will remember the last one that you did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to say good. And then I will go to the article. Yes. <laughs> so whilst he does what I asked him to do, I'll also be explaining like this is an example of an article that we are changing everything even before we add an um, a citation. So like I said to the earlier question, please be bold and make changes. Do not be uh, worried that somebody will say you change something, it's a wiki, so you feel free to do it. So I like I was saying, please feel free to create a section called um career and a section called editor. Now to create a section, um, you have to put your cursor where you want to create it. And as you can see, he's clicking on where the paragraph is. Um, you click on that and then you choose heading and you type what you want. And then you click enter, you type enter. You push enter, sorry. And then you can create the next section too, which is um, um, education. Good. Now we want to be able to move some of the content that is in the intro. It's too much. Okay. So it says that um, it's a Ghanaian librarian who is present, who is the present university librarian at the Ghanaian University Library, education included. So let's move all the education into section called education. So you can normally cut it like a normal control X or command if you're using MacBook to cut it out. Like normal copy and paste, that sort of thing. Good. And then you paste it. <clears throat> then let's read if there's anything on her career. It says that she is one of 14 members of the International Advisory Committee. Um, this line, I think, should be, yeah, all in career. OK, good. So now what I want us to do is that we have to improve, first of all, the intro section, and then we'll go on to improve the other sections, okay? So if I asked you, um, what's the name, um, Stanley, to tell me who Helena is, like in just two sentences, what would you say? Okay, so start, starting from the first sentence, um, this would have to be updated uh, because he, she is not presently um, at the King University Library. Um, she's okay. presently the executive director for AFLIA. Okay. So maybe so we can, can you write that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Change that. That's what I was asking. Yeah. Exactly. So feel free to write what you would, you would think about Helena in two sentences. So, for example, um, Helena, born in 1950s in Cape Coast, is a Ghanaian librarian who is currently the executive director of AFLIA, as well as maybe. Um, I don't know, president of something else, whatever title you know, let's put everything there. And then we will find a source and add it so that we can show people how it is done. So this example is very good because it answers a lot of the questions that were asked before. So whoever asked, can you change content? Yes, as you can see, we are changing content entirely and putting the right information there and putting the sources there. So we've answered like this particular example answers a lot of those questions. Okay, so what Stanley is doing now is that he's adding a link um, so that people can read. So normally when you're reading Wikipedia articles, you would see blue links here and there. Um, the blue links help um, readers to relate to the things they are reading in a particular article, okay? Um, if it doesn't exist, you see something like that. So we don't have, no, no, not external Wikipedia. Yeah, meaning that Wikipedia does not have an article on Ghana Library Authority. So then this is also an avenue where you guys can improve an article. So by even adding an in-text link, you have already seen that Wikipedia is lacking one article that's very important, which is the Ghana Library Authority. So because it's not there, you can leave it as a red link. So you can click on this. Click on the red link below. Yeah. And then that's it. 
Now, what you have done is that you didn't add a blue link, but you have added a red link telling somebody that this particular article is lacking, that this particular content could, could be useful if somebody wrote an article about it. You understand? So it's good. Stanley, your screen is gone. It's good that you, you just did that. Adding the oh, it's link. gone? Sorry. Yeah, I cannot see it. Um, hold up. Okay. So sometimes if you, if you think there's something that you in an, in an article that needs to have an article on Wikipedia, because adding a link or a blue link is just like a, a hyperlink, which is like showing somebody, uh, maybe you are reading and you saw human rights, then you can add a blue link of human rights so that whoever is reading, if they don't know what human rights is, they can easily reference with another Wikipedia article what human rights is. So in his case, Ghana Library Authority is missing and we've added that, okay? Now, okay, African Library Information, this is also missing. This does not have an article. So this, in this article alone, we are informing readers that, hey, you can write articles about this particular one and that particular one, okay? Now, I think you can remove the key and USD, um, yeah, stuff. And then you can put your full stop just after the end of the sentence. Then you add your citation right now. So right now you have to find a source that says that um, Helena is a Ghanaian librarian um, who is the executive director of African Library Association as well as the board chair of Ghana Library Authority. You don't necessarily have to find one content that says both. You can find two different ones that say either, um, like either, either of them and then you can cite them. So please find that and put that citation there so that everybody can understand how this is done. Stanley, go to the AFLIA website, Governance Structure. You find the one of um, AFLIA. Yeah, great. That's what and, and, and by doing this, you see that what you're doing is that now you're indexing AFLIA on the web. I, I believe most of you know that Wikipedia is like the, the fifth largest website in the world, and it's the only non governmental organization within the top five. Now, what, what people normally do is that, like, most academics in the US are now citing a lot of their published works on Wikipedia. So that when somebody searches something about the works that they are publishing, it will come up first. And so Wikipedia can also provide that advantage for librarians and researchers on the continent so that more of our work can be used to reference things from Africa and to make it more readily accessible to people to read about um, research. Yeah. So as you can see, as I rightly taught you, he has added the citation and to do that you put your cursor at the end of the part where you want to cite and then you would click on cite uh, when you click on cite you will copy and paste the url that you where you got the source from and then you click on generate um when you click on generate it will generate and then it will it will say insert now yes and you can click on insert now i've seen that you added the citation directly at the point where it says she's the executive director. Most people do this. But it's a style of referencing that people normally, they want to like show that this is exactly what I'm citing. But you can also put it at the end of the full stop because the person is reading that whole sentence and they could, I mean, draw that same meaning and say, hey, okay, this is citing this particular content and this is citing that particular one, okay? So we have added the citation. Um, can you publish and then do the hash one one ref and then the AFLIA hashtag so they can see how it is done. So the next step will be to publish what you have done. So you click on publish and then in the description you put in the hashtag Afri African Librarians Week and then the hashtag um, one one ref and then you tell us what you did. Add the citation and then you publish. Okay, so as you can see, he has rightfully added what he did, and now he can go ahead and publish. Yes, I think because you're new, they're asking you to, but don't worry. Uh, type that, I'm sure. 
everything will be fine. As you can see, the edit is now live and the article is looking much more nicer and much more readable than before, right? So don't be scared as a librarian in this campaign to change things around. If you see something that's terrible, please feel free to change it. Don't, don't hesitate at all. Now, this is how to add a citation without using the citation in the tag, a citation hand tool. So if for some reason you are able to find a citation, um, an article that needs a citation by yourself, you don't need to go through the citation hunt again. You can just go through the process of adding a citation directly and then that will be done. The last thing that I'll show you here is how to add a citation needed tag so that somebody who is looking for an article that could be improved could find it. So um, I'll repeat again, a citation needed tag. Sorry. You can take over now, right? No, I, I don't have the means. So you okay. still be the one right. to do it. So a citation needed tag is a template that you put on an article so that everybody can know that this particular line in the article needs a citation, okay? So um, if you look at the citation hand tool, whenever you search for something, you find it. When you get to the page, there is a citation needed tag at the end of, the, at the end of it. Now what a citation needed tag does is that it helps the tool to like pull out all articles that need a citation. So as a librarian and as part of the campaign, you can also add a citation needed tag to help us curate Wikipedia pages and to help us improve the content already exist. So by doing that, it's very simple. You can just click edit in this very article. I'll show you where we need a citation needed tag. Now, at the end of the Ghana Library Authority, put um, your case up there. And then when you put your case up there, you will go to the top of the page and click insert. When you click insert, you choose template. And then when you choose template, there'll be a pop-up box where you have to type citation needed. Then it will bring down a, um, a roll up button. The first one is what you're supposed to click on. So you click on the first one. And then you go ahead and click insert. As you can see, we have just added the citation. No, but the citation needed should have come after the full stop, not before the full stop. So can you backspace the full stop and then just go and add the full stop after? Hello, Felix. Yes. I, I, I put a citation for Ghana Library Authority in the chat box with her name there. I saw one with her name there. As the, as the chairman. Can we use that? Yes, we can use it. Yes, we can use it. Yeah. Yes, he can. But we are just showing them all the ways that they yeah. can actually participate in the campaign. So we will do this, okay. then after that, we'll also go and put the proper citation there, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, thank you too. And thank you for helping us make our work easy. So as you can see right now, we've just added a citation in the tag to the article. What we are telling the rest of the world is that, hey, you're reading this article, but it still needs some citation, right? So if you can help us with the citation, we'll be very happy about that. What we are also doing is that by adding the citation needed tag, we are helping the citation hunt tool to fish out this article as an article that needs a citation so that anybody who can help improve the article can come someday and improve the article. So we have tackled all the three ways that you can actually participate in the campaign. The first one is by using the citation hunt tool to find an article that needs a citation. Then you can improve it. The second um, instance is using the, um, by finding an article on your own and then using the normal process to add a citation. Okay. And then the third one is by finding an article that needs a citation. Even if you don't have the citation, you can go ahead and add a citation with your tag just that um, just to help other people who are reading and other people who will be willing to add a citation in the future okay so these are the three ways that people can participate in the campaign okay um you can go ahead and save this so as you can see he's added his hashtags and what he did 
and then you can go ahead and save it just like the previous one and then it is saved this will now guide people and also help the citation hunt tool to be able to find this article as an article that needs a citation now because um dr Nkem has already found the source for us we can easily go back and fix this so you can click your edits button again And, and, and Felix, why, yeah. why is this edited place in red? Why is the um, African uh, uh, Afia in red? I will answer all those questions. I, I saw that in the chat box. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. So you click your edit and then you would remove the citation needed tag. So to remove it, you just put your cursor at the end of it and then you backspace it to remove it. Yeah, I want to. Then the source that was mentioned by Dr. Nkem, we can pick it up and then yeah. use it to Dr. sign Nkem, can you Can you put it on the, the group WhatsApp page? Um, don't, Stanley. And, and um, Felix, how do we add pictures? How can we add her picture? Okay, I will explain all of that in one minute. I'm writing that question down, pictures. So as you can see, Stanley has copied it. He clicked on the side button and then he's pasted it in and generated. So now he can go ahead and click insert to insert it and then he can go ahead and publish and tell us what he did. So this is how to participate in the campaign. It is very easy as you have seen, anybody can do this. Um, I will repeat again, there are three ways you can participate in the campaign. One, by using the citation hand tool to find um, cit um, articles that need citation and then improve them. Two, finding an article yourself and improving them um, with um, citations and three, adding a citation media tag to guide readers and to also help our tool find articles that need citation or generally just um, help any other person who may find that article in future and be able to add a citation. These are the three ways that we're participating. Now, the second thing that I spoke about was that you can find an article. To make your life easy for you, the Wikimedia Foundation is working with Afflea to come up with a list of African scholars. Um, and that list will be put on Afflea's website so you can pick from any of those lists to edit during the campaign period and you can also go ahead and find your own um, um, articles to edit but just to also help and make the process much more easier um, Wikimedia Foundation and Afflea will facilitate that uh, particular list for you so that you can also be able to do um, um, these things in a minimal way I hope at this point in time all of you are comfortable with what we have taught so far um, you are okay. Um, if not, um, I'll take questions after answering these two questions that Dr. Nkem asked, and then um, we'll see how best I can solve um, any concerns that you all like, answer any concerns that you have. Now, the reason why African Librarian Association and the Ghana Library Authority is in red is because these do not exist yet on Wikipedia. Remember, we said in the beginning that anything that do not exist is red. So there is no article on African Library and Information Association and Institutions yet on Wikipedia. And so when we tried to put what we call the in-text link or the hyperlink, which is, for example, if you click on Cape Coast, you see it's blue. Can you please put your case on Cape Coast? You see, Cape Coast is blue and you see it is showing us what Cape Coast is. So anybody who's re reading this article who does not know what Cape Coast is can immediately have an overview of what Cape Coast is by saying Cape Coast is a city, a fishing port and the capital of Cape, Cape Coast Metropolitan District and Central Region of Southern Ghana. You see, so this is the reason why we put in-text links there so that when somebody is reading, they can have contextual meaning of what they're reading. Now, what um, Stanley did is very essential because we know that any reader who's reading this will want to know what African Liberian Association is, right? But because it does not exist, he, he shouldn't say that, oh, I'll not add a link. So we added a red link so that we will tell anybody who reads this article in the future that, hey, you could actually write an article about African Liberian Association, um, Association, right? So adding the red link 
is very important because it is something that's supposed to be linked in this particular article, just that it doesn't exist on Wikipedia. By making it red, anybody can actually click on it. So Stanley, please click on it and let me show you. Click on any of the red. As soon as you click on it, it will say create this article, right? So we are prompting, so you see, it's the article, the article you're looking for does not exist, right? So you can go ahead and create it. What we are literally doing is that we are prompting anybody who is reading and may be able to write about the African Librarian Association to be able to write about it. So um, it looks bad for now because it's red, but then eventually somebody will go and write it up and it will become good because that's the intention with which we put in the link. I hope I answered that question. Okay, Stanley, can you go back so that I can answer the next one? The next one, I think, was on pictures. Uh, to add pictures, um, can you please go back, um, Stanley? Please, if I did not answer the question on the red thing, yeah, well, and you still have concerns, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, please don't hesitate to ask, okay? Now, to add a picture to an article like this, it's very simple, okay? In the list of projects on the Wikipedia page that I, I showed you in the presentation, there was one of them called Wikimedia Commons. Wikimedia Commons is the audiovisual repository of Wikipedia. So this is where we keep all videos, all audios, and all pictures of anything that could reference or improve the readability of an article, okay? So to open that is very easy. Can you please open a new tab, Stanley? And then in the new tab, you will type commons.wikimedia.org. Commons.wikimedia.org. No, not dot, like post up. <laughs> yeah. So commons.wikimedia.org. Then you push enter. We will send all these links around. So if you need to do anything, you would have them. Now this will open the audiovisual repository for Wikipedia. Anything that exists here can be used on Wikipedia, okay? So if there was a photo of Dr. Helen, uh, um, Helena here, we could easily move it on Wikipedia, but I don't think there is. I don't know if maybe she's had photos here before. So you just type a full name, let's see if she has something on her. Oh, there is. No, there isn't. So it's only showed her name because she has a Wikidata entry, right? But I don't think she has the photo. The reason why you are seeing it like, you see, when you type it, yeah. it gives you the name. It gives you the name because she has a Wikidata entry, right? Which is also good, because now yeah. we can link a Wikidata to a Wikipedia, right? And I will not talk about Wikidata today because that's a whole new world. But oh, then Exactly. I just wanted to say something, <laughs> Felix, because yeah. first of all, we need to know how do we upload pictures there? Because we have lots of pictures we want to share about Afia as we are writing the article. Even about Ma, we want the pictures there so that everything would be easier for, for us. Okay. I thought I was doing a Wikimedia session today. It looks like I have to go somewhere. Okay, no problem. We'll see. The free licenses are CC by SA. I, I will not have the time to teach you details what each license is. But I think next year I'll be at the Afria um conference definitely and so we can take advantage of that and do some of these trainings on all of the ecosystem but um it uses something called a cc by sd and what cc by sd means is creative commons attribution share alike right so whenever you put a photo on wikimedia commons it means that anybody in the world can take it and use it that's the purpose of wikimedia commons you need to understand this license before you put a picture out now there's also issues when people say oh but the picture belongs to Aflia, so i uploaded a picture right because when you upload a picture that is not yours you must seek permission from the person before you actually put it out there so it's not as easy as it is as it looks to upload pictures on common 
right? Because there's a lot of licensing things underlining that. And you, you find a lot of people not listening and uploading pictures, but at the end, at the end, they have a lot of their photos being deleted. Okay? So for the Aflia one, I don't know who took the photo. That's the first question I need. Who took the photo? Um, hello, Felix. Um, what, uh, I, I, I can't say now, but we take pictures um, in Aflia of when we have events. So maybe we'll, we'll look for those ones that we took and share so that they, we know that um, it, it's, it's, it's for us to share that, that we have the copyright input for us to share. And again, um, this thing that you're saying is, is, is very important because right now we are reviewing a course on OER and those yeah. licenses are a part of it. You know, uh -huh. yeah. Creative <laughs> Commons, uh, CC by by SA, CC by NG, and so on. I would, I would, I would just like to say that it's not as easy as it looks. Like it, I can show you how to upload photo, which is very easy, but then the technicalities behind it becomes a little bit of a problem. So um, what we can do is that I can take you through the process, and then what I can advise is that if a player claims to be the owner of the photos that you're willing to upload. All you have to do is that you would have to let maybe whoever you choose, maybe the conference when they upload, Aflia should write an email with your email. So you, Dr. Tankem, I'll speak to you in the back about this. There will be a release form that I'll create for you. Then you will send it to a second service and to prove that you have given him the right to upload the photos. And then once you All do right. that, the photos will be allowed. Okay. So right. the meeting, you you're welcome. In the meantime, Stanley, please go back to Commons. Let me just show you how to upload a photo without showing you the licenses for today. Then um, later on, um, we can show the licenses. Um, maybe we can organize a, a different session for, for that. But for today, let's just focus on maybe moving a photo to Wikipedia so you can see how it's done. So we can go on Commons. And when you get to commons, you like commons.wikimedia.org, it will bring you to the main page. When you get to the main page, you see upload right in front of you, or even on the left, you also see upload file under participate. Uh, you can click on any of them to start uploading. Um, this very simple interface will be opened. You can scroll down to skip this logo, but this logo also shows you how to do the whole upload thing, right? So it's not a big problem, you can do that. Um, can you scroll down? And then you can clip, skip this few, um, step next time so that it doesn't show it. Or you can just click next. Then it will ask you to select the media or file that you want to share. So just for the purposes, can you select any media that you want to share? To um, upload a photo as Stanley did. You will click the big upload button in the middle that you see, and then you will select the photo that is saved in your um, computer, and then you will click on it to upload. As, as soon as it is done, it will have this green checkbox at the end, and then you can click continue. Yeah, so you can click next, uh, continue, sorry. Uh, looks like you went back. Okay, so you can click continue. I wanted to change the file name. Ah, okay. So when you click on continue, this is where the um, licensing issue comes in. You see, we are asking you, is this file your own work? Is it not your own work? So in this case, Stanley, um, we just have to say it's your own work. Other than that, it will be deleted. So we just have to assume that you're the one who took this photo today. And then you can go on. And I hope this photo is nowhere online. Or if it's online, then we'll have a big problem. Hello, Stanley. 
Yeah, it's it's online. What 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 if it's online and uh, we took it, like uh, Aflia as an organization? Uh, if Afli as an organization took it, there must be something that we have to do before we upload. Um, okay, so you go back. Go back. Because it's Aflia, you let's go back and make the correction. At the bottom, at the bottom, you will see back. Click. This file is not my own work. Scroll to the bottom. Then ask you the source, right? African Library Association. Okay. Or oh, Aflia. So this is the particular problem I was talking about. If you don't own the photo, you go through a lot of hassle. Like right now, we're going to do this. But um, I'll find a way to, to rectify it in the background, or else they will delete the photo. If you choose to write Aflia, then which means subsequently all the photos must be written as the source Aflia. Or you could choose to write the full name, African Library Association, whatever you decide to do. Right. Okay. The, the source should not be just the name, it should be the name and the URL. Right. Like the sites. Yeah. And then the author can be just the name. So Stanley, if you have Afia's website, you can just add it. <clears throat> Good. And then we can go ahead and click next. <laughs> then you have to tell us what is the image title. So maybe Dr. Helena Samoa Hassan speaks at the 23rd, whatever, or 43rd. Like it should be a description that gives us what we're looking at in the picture. Or Dr. Helena start delivering a speech, something. Okay, we, with this done, this could also be the caption anyway. So you can copy the same thing and put it as the caption. Because the caption also normally de depicts like what's in the photo. And then the description, you have to tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing in the photo. So you go down, there's a description. So describe a little bit more what's in the photo. I think you should know better than me. Uh, okay. I think the, the title you gave is much more vivid. So you know what, in the caption, let's write Dr. Helena Samoa delivers a speech, right? A speech so that we can just leave the um, detailed one for the description. Yeah. The speech has S. 
Your speech is plural, I think. Your speech. Yeah. You can paste that same thing here. Yeah, good. Okay, so we can go to the bottom. Um, we've already added that to the description. And then the date the work was created, if we know. Um, do you know the year? You can just put in the year if that's what you remember. You don't have to remember the whole thing. So you can put in like. Um, was last year October. Okay, good. So you can maybe first October last year, 10 October, whatever you decide to do. <laughs> this is not so important. What is important is the description and all of that. Then the next thing you when you see down there is the categories. The category is what other things can you affiliate Dr. Um, Helena with? One of the things could be African librarians. So you look whether there's a category called African librarians. Also, if there is. Felix, you, you can yes. all, she was, um, she was once um, a member of the uh, EFLAD governing board you know, then a okay. leadership program. So you can add the um, governing board, if you like. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. So libraries in Africa is not showing up, which means this category does not exist, or African librarians is not showing up. So this is something you would want to create, but Commons is not a focus for this round. So you don't let us focus too much on this. Look for librarians. He's a librarian, so you can add it to the librarians category. You can add there, she was born in 1950s, right? So you can look for Beth in 1950s. Let's see if there's something like that. There isn't. Okay, right, 1950s only. I think it's, um, it will pop up a lot of things, uh, 1950. Yeah, so you see books, can you scroll down? Can you scroll down? Um, there could be some other ones. Okay, okay, it's not there. You, you, you can remove this tag as well. There's no category called Bet in 1950. But she's people from Ghana, so you can add people from Ghana category. People from Ghana. Okay, I think I'm writing it wrong. It's, can you write um, Ghanaian people? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a category called Ghanaian. You can go on and on. Anything that fits a description, you can add all those categories. Um, and then that's it. So we've added two for now. It, more can be added later on. And you can go ahead and publish files at the bottom. Yeah, um, so Felix, uh, just a quick one. Can, can, can it be edited mm -hmm. at a later time again? Yes. Okay. Anything on Wikipedia is editable. <laughs> All right. So you can publish this. And then after you publish, Wikidata will ask, come and ask you questions like, what do I see in school? We do because not everybody will know she's called Dr. Helena, but maybe somebody would see, um, want to see females from Ghana. And when they type, they'll get this. So you can add a description to help people search for this photo and find it. Um, and it's asking you, like, what items are depicted in the photo? You can say female. You can type female in the search. So female, um, when you type that, it should give you a drop down, like gender. Um, it has to be sex or gender. So that's the one. No, no, no. This is a movie. Uh, sex, gender. That's it. So you can add more things to make more sense of what you're seeing. But time is going, so can you skip and then move on? So you can go to the bottom of the page and then pub, um, move on, um, publish data for all files. Then, now we've up successfully uploaded this photo, right? To upload this photo, 
click on the photo itself to open the real photo. Now to upload this photo, it is very easy. All you have to do is to copy um, the file name without the file colon. So copy Dr. Helena, no, at the top. You copy that, we, don't worry, we can edit it later on. So let's just focus on like get, getting the, the things done for, yes. So just copy this, just that. So don't copy the file colon like you have done, um, anybody watching, it's only the name. So you copy that and then you have to copy with the file extension .jpg. Good. You copy that and then now you go to the Wikipedia article. <coughs> when you get to the Wikipedia article, you click your edit. And then you click that box on the right. It's called an info box. You click on that. Then you click edit. Then now you can look for a part in that that says image and paste the image there, the title you've copied, and then apply changes. We have successfully added her picture to her article. So this is how you upload a picture and then add it back on Wikipedia. But like I said, this is not the focus of the training. I just decided to do it because Tang Kim wanted to know, I think for um, affiliate purposes. So I just wanted to showcase that. But um, this is not a focus of the, the campaign that you'll be running. And it could be something that you could do within the campaign, but not necessarily the main thing that you need to look out for. I think at this point in time, I have successfully taken you through everything that I wanted to do today. I will not take any more of your time because I've, <coughs> I've gone overboard a lot of times. If there are any final questions, I'll take them. Um, if not, I would say thank you very much for, for staying along and listening to me in this very lengthy training. I was hoping it was going to be short, but a lot of things did not work out as planned. So yeah, thank you very much. And I truly appreciate um, you being around. Thank you, Felix. Please, Stanley, can you take over my... Hello, Stanley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Again, thank you, uh, Felix. Um, I I uh, I don't know if there are any questions um, from all the things that we have done. In fact, I know it's a it's a there's a lot of things that we have done today, but let's. Let's always remember the focus of um, our week. Um, we are always available should you need um, further clarification. And then um, again, we would also like to appreciate the support and the presence of our executive director, um, Dr. Helena Samoa Hassan. Um, uh, I think we've, we've used her page and uh, it's been really useful for all of us. Uh, at this moment, as, as the leader of the organization uh, or the leader of the secretariat, I, I wish to invite her, maybe she might have um, a word or two for every one of us before mm -hmm. we, we, round, we round up our, our meeting today. So, um, uh, Dr. Helena. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I think this is an exciting um, project. It's something which is going to help us do a lot of editing on whatever is existing. And I believe that it's also going to showcase us as librarians. So my plea is that uh, we will all take this seriously and work as much as possible because at the end of the day we always say we want to let people know our relevance and this is a very key thing we can do which the whole world will see what we have done because once we do all these edits and as we went through whoever did it your name will be there and everybody will see 
So I'm really happy that this has come up. Thank you, Felix, for this uh, uh, training. And I'm happy that I've been able to see through for once. This is my first time. And I'm excited about that. And I believe all my colleagues are also excited. Like Stanley and Inkem said, if there are any issues, I think uh, you can go back to them later and get it sorted out. Uh, finally, I I'm happy that uh, I was used as a guinea pig and I believe <laughs> that you, you were not bored reading all those things about me. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Um, thank you very much, madam. Um, yeah, so, well, uh, time, time is far spent. Um, thank you all once again. Uh, thank you for the team. Thank you, uh, Felix. In fact, you know, we've, we've, been, we've been worrying you for quite some time. And uh, we know that all the effort and the hard work put in this would definitely pay off. Again, I would repeat that if you have any problems, if you encounter anything, please get back at us. We will be able to put you through when necessary so that you can participate. Remember that once you are getting involved, you are representing your institution, you are representing your country as well. We wish that you will be able to communicate this um, upcoming event to many others within your circle, your other colleagues, get them also on board. What you have learned now, you'll be able to explain and teach others as well. That's why you are being called upon as champions. So, um, so that on the 24th, right through to the 30th, I mean, we can set the ball rolling and um, everything will be on course. So, Viva Aflia, Viva Wikimedia, Viva everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much for making the time today. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. All of you. God bless you. Bye-bye.